section right now, so they've got that crowd to deal with. Joe Ford, Greg Mass, a short pull up. Misses it. Hoverson the rebound. Younger clears the board. Bergerud can shoot that short. Great position underneath by Mark Hoverson to get that rebound. Why not staying in that zone and why not? Grand Forks has had trouble finding the seam in it. Jermaine Davis way out away from the basket. He's much more comfortable in the paint. Steal by Bergerud. He falls down. Knights get it back. Now they slow it down again. Pressure on the Grand Fork Central Knights by that crowd down there as they're trying to be very patient with their shot selection. Bollinger tries to do it himself. Whistle. Foul underneath. I believe they're going to get Tremaine Davis. That'll be his first personal. The second team foul on the Knights. Minot is yet to commit a foul. Younger trying to get free down low. He's got his hand up. Behrman for three. Rattles out, but there's Kenny Younger. Doesn't get it to go. Again. This is the Kenny Younger that we are accustomed to seeing. Six points already and a ton of rebounds. Central's going to do anything. They've got to do better on the boards than that. Jermaine Davis is just not going to be a factor if he doesn't, if he's not able to get the ball any closer than they're getting it to him now. He's been forced to run the baseline against that zone and almost a steal from Dean Bart. And that noise is on the central goal. That's the crowd behind the basket for Minot. The jumper from Davis misses. Here's Minot. Dusty Bergerud. Nice pass inside from Bergerud. Boy, the key tonight, the Magi perimeter players getting Kenny Younger the ball in position to score down low. 12 to three now, the Magi lead. This is the best we've seen Minot look in this tournament thus far. Hoverson will try another rebound for Younger. Just don't think the Knights are comfortable playing the slow down type of game that they're trying to play. They don't feel they can run with Minot, but that's that's their game. Tough situation for them. Look at that. That is sweet. Younger already has 10 points. It's an 11 point lead for Minot. This is by far their biggest first quarter lead they've been able to build in this tournament. Knights just cannot match up with the height of Minot. Younger at 6'8". Berryman at 6'5". Tallest man on Central's team is 6'4". Boy, that helps. Joe Ford able to work free from the three. Averages 14 and a half points a game and a very good three-point shooter. Berryman the lob. Nice save by Joe Ford. 24 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Minot in control. Well, the Knights were so good the last few days working Joe Ford off screens, but tough to set screens against his own. They're just, all they can do is stand around outside. Huge mismatch there with Hoverson and Younger, and they're going to get a cheap foul on Younger here. Yeah, break for the Knights there. There was only one second left in the quarter. Hoverson was not going to get a good shot off, but they get the foul regardless. A couple of substitutions now for the Knights. John Hager into the ball game as is Mickey Ely. Not enough time for the Knights to get a shot on. So it'll be 14 to six, an eight point lead for the defending champions as they look for two in a row.
stick around at halftime. Coming up on the North Dakota Farmers Union Insurance Halftime Report, stats and analysis, and we'll get you ready for the second half. 14 to 6, Minot leads this one. Second quarter just underway. Central not changing their attack at all, though Minot has switched into a more aggressive matchup zone. Joe Ford short on the three-pointer. Now the magicians come out of the timeout, pressuring the perimeter players, not allowing the Knights to stand around and try to find somebody for three. They're not going to let him slow it down. Check out these uh, stats from the first quarter. Kenny Younger shooting 83%. He has 10 points. Grand Fork Central only shooting 18%. Two for 11 in the first quarter. Meanwhile, Minot shooting 60%. Well, they shot over 70% in a win in the West Region Tournament. They can really light it up. Mark Kinnebrew with the ball into the game now. A super sub for the Magicians. Central staying with their zone. Barch. Well, he's not going to pass that shot off very often. Brett Perriman cleans the boards. That's his first field goal off the Barch miss. Ten-point lead. Here's Minot. Staying in that matchup zone. Either a matchup zone or just a very loose man-to-man. -man. Is there... They're going to try to force the issue a little bit. Greg Mask penetrates, pulls up, gets the roll. See if Minot goes back into Kenny Younger. He's got 10 points already, needs to finish with 34 tonight to become the all-time scoring leader in Minot High School history. He's got a chance to build it to 12, but it's knocked away by Joe Ford. Grand Forks, a little turn of momentum here in the second quarter. Grand Forks Central, oh, and they're going to lose this. I was just going to say, Central looks like they've taken it up a notch, getting a little gnarly out there, and then they threw the ball away. Only three fouls so far in the basketball game. Josh Blickery checks in for the Magicians now. He's a 6'4 senior. During the regular season, averages two points and two rebounds, but he has been outstanding during this state tournament. This oh, is Bartsch with the left hand. What a sweet drive by Dean Bartsch. So the lead back up to 10 now for Minot. John Hager tries to drive, ball knocked away, here comes Kinnebrew. Mark Kinnebrew to Dean Barch, but a whistle's called before the basket. I think they're, they're going to say that uh, Central's number 10, Mickey Ely, had a hand on him all the way down the court. Kinnebrew forcing the issue, and he forces the foul. 5.28 left to go in the first half. You're watching the state title. Central, number one from the west, the Minot Magicians. But right now, it's all Minot. They lead by 10. First half of the second quarter of play. Brett Behrman for three. That was Tit. Behrman having trouble getting a shot off this evening. Greg Mask will push it up. John Hager didn't like that shot. Mask with the penetration. Foul is called, basket does not go. He'll shoot two, another statistical update on that man, number 50, Kenny Younger for Minot. Not only does he have a chance uh, with a huge game tonight to become the all-time leading scorer in Minot High School history, but he's essentially a lock, especially after his early start of becoming, uh, breaking the all-time single season field goal percentage record. Coming into this game tonight, including tournament games, Kenny Younger shooting 71% from the floor. The old record held by Wayne Whitty, 67%. So, barring a total collapse now for Kenny Younger, he will at least get that record. Greg Mask with the free throw. Nailed his first one. Has a chance to cut the Minot lead to eight, and he does. Greg Mask has seven points to lead the Knights. A little press now from Grand Fork Central. Why not? Nice job breaking it. Brett Behrman. Back out to Barch for three. No good. Gonna be another Minot fall here. But 
foul on Blickery. Only the third team foul. For my not three apiece. Central. Hager from the corner for three. No good. Kinnebrew running the show. Minot trying to force the tempo. Behrman took a glance at a three. Inside to Kenny Younger. Slapped away, though. The Knights doing a much better job on him. Joe Ford to steal. Nice denial by Joe Ford. Grand Fork Central tries to move it up before Younger can get set up underneath there. They don't make it in time. Mask for three. It's off. Battle for the board. Whistle blown. I think they're going to get Hoverson for over the back on that, Dan. That's not easy to get over Kenny Younger's back. <laughs> okay, uh, over the uh, middle of his back. How about that? How about attempted assault? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Grand Fork Central's got absolutely nothing to lose in this contest, so by playing a little more aggressive and getting a few more fouls, I don't think it makes a big difference. Wapit and coach John Del Val coming into this tournament, though, thought that the, the most pressure Minot would face would be in that first round game. And he proved his point by giving him a game. Right now, they look real loose, real confident. That was a great matchup, and uh, we've talked to a couple of the coaches, and uh, they agree, as we see the replay, that Hunter Ranke of Wapitan was the best matchup Kenny Younger faced all year. Mark Kinnebrew made that happen with his penetration. Now he'll go to the line. Mark Kinnebrew, just a junior, one of the few magicians on the varsity roster who will return next year to be a very uh, key player for them next season. No doubt they will build their offensive philosophy or strategy around him. But a uh, very good year for the freshman, sophomore, and Bar or JV programs at Minot also. And a theme that we're seeing throughout that program is they're shooting the three-pointers down in those levels too, and they're making it. So that's the direction. Ten-point lead. Walk. In and out, no good for John Hager. And the cold shooting continues to hamper the Knights. We begin the second half of the second quarter now. Steal from Greg Mask, and he'll go in against Kinnebrew. No foul call, give Mask the bucket. We almost had Mark Overson on our laps here, but he regains himself. He's back in the paint. Brett Barriman driving the baseline. Kenny Younger, I <laughs> Too wide open, I think. Fired up Joe Ford with a rip gorilla rebound. Hager for three. He has been taking that shot. Well, the Knights thought they had the ball back. Suddenly it's a five-point game. John Hager has been taking that shot. Finally he hits a three, and the Knights have some life. 321 left to go in the half. Ever get the at night? Second night, it was camouflage night for the Minot fans, and uh, face painting night? I'm not sure what night it is this time. Tough to tell. I think it's, uh, it seems like maybe they're just wearing their school colors, perhaps. A press now from the Knights, and it immediately pays dividends as the ball goes off the hands of Dean Barch. And now, suddenly, Grand Fork Central, their first threat. They cut it to five on the John Hager three-pointer. Extremely important possession for the Knights. They can get a bucket here. They'll cut that lead. Closer Wait. than they've been since the start of the game. It's not going to happen. Brett Behrman gets it ahead to Mark Kinnebrew. Misses it. There's Younger. He misses. Behrman can't get it. Barch can't get it. Younger again. Foul is called. Five times Minot came down with the ball. Five times they were denied. Look at this scramble for the ball. The Knight sending a message to Minot saying, you guys might be bigger, stronger, taller, but we're going to fight you every step of the way. Younger has not scored since knocking down 10 early in the first quarter. That foul was called on Brooks Bollinger, by the way, underneath, but how could you tell? You just picked one. Great position underneath. Did you check that out? Great position by both Overson and Ford to allow the rebound underneath. Give Ford the board. And once again, the Knights can cut it to two with the three. Or three with the two. That's, that's how math works. 
for Dean Bart's doing a nice job of checking him outside. Hoverson. Underneath Younger, and he draws the foul. You will remember that, that was Younger's, a sweet move. Younger's first foul was kind of a cheap one, but this one a hard one, and now he's got two. Hoverson, if he would have just went up with that, he would have been rejected, and he's already been rejected once in this game by Younger, which made the crowd explode. So Kenny Younger is going to step off for a few minutes with two fouls. Good move from Gene Manson, sitting him down. He'll probably, if he can, keep him out the rest of the half so that he has three fouls to play with in the second. Hoverson comes up short on the free throw. You know, when they sat Kenny Younger down for almost the whole third quarter against Wapit in the opener, Younger came out just hot in that fourth quarter, and that was the difference in the game against Wapit. Of course, now a great opportunity for the Knights. They cut it to four on the Hoverson free throw, and now they certainly match up much better with Minot with Younger on the bench, and they come up with a steal. Hoverson with a great, great acrobatic steal to stay in bounds. Bollinger, the brick. Berriman, the rebound. And when Younger's on the bench, Berryman takes over for the, for the uh, Magi. Oh, they throw it away. Bergerud had nobody to throw it to. Nobody was moving towards the ball. Foul is called. Dean Barsh getting flagged for that one. We talked about Mark Hoverson in the introductions a little bit tonight. Hoverson, the blue-collar, strong, forceful guy. The Knights, never afraid to mix it up. 147 to go in the first half, 20 to 16. Minot on top of Grand Forks Central as they get it into Brooks Bullinger. Joe Ford for three, a long three. And it's too long. Greg Mask down low. Hager follows. And there's going to be another foul called on Minot. Looks like it's going to be Josh Blickery who's going to pick up his second personal foul. And the crowd, especially the parent section, is getting on Rush Michael for what they think is the wrong call. Knights keep hanging around now in the second quarter. Minute and a half left to go in the half. Mask wants the ball. He's posting up Chris Falcon down low. Ford trying to make some moves on Brett Behrman. That's a good matchup. Now suddenly the Knights think they can get something going. Hoverson from the free throw line. They just can't. They can't get it to drop. They only shot 18% in the first quarter, and they're not shooting much better in the second. Not getting themselves easy shots and not hitting the jump shots. Bart's to Bergeru. No good. The saving grace for Grand Fork Central is that Minot has not been able to connect on the three. They hit a ton of them earlier this season against the Knights. And there's another call against the Minot Magicians. This one going up against uh, Dusty Bergeru. Just to finish that thought, earlier in an 11-point Minot win at the Holiday Tournament earlier this season, Minot, it was against this Grand Fork Central team. 23-pointers, eight of those from Dean Bart. Minot the bonus now, so the Knights go to the line. Brooks Bollinger will shoot one and one. Well, the way Minot started this game out, I'm impressed with the way Central has been playing ever since. Inside a minute to play in the first half. You see the time in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Minot leading by just four after dominating the first quarter. Kinnebrew for three. He can shoot that, but an air ball. I think Hager got a finger on it. So once again, the Knights have had three opportunities to cut this two or less. They've yet to capitalize. Now they're going to go for one shot. Real happy to go into the locker room. Todd Olson would have to be, even if it stays 20 to 16, keeping the score down. Eight seconds left. Got to make something happen. Good defense for Chris Falcon. Greg Mass pulls up. Too long. Minot will not get another shot off. So we have come to the half. Playing the Class A season. We're going to figure out who the champion is here. Mark Kinnebrew starts the second half in place of, in place of Dusty Bergeru. Chris Falcon stays in. Brett Barriman just touched it. Dean Barch and, of course, Kenny Younger in the middle. Same starting five for Grand Fork Central. And the same defense for Central. A collapsing defense. Look at Kenny attract the crowd when he gets the ball. 
still doesn't stop him. That's the way we started the game. Triple team, Younger scores anyway. He had 10 in the first quarter, 10 in the first half. He didn't score in the second quarter. 22 to 16, Minot leads. Joe Ford, long. Grand Forks Central continues poor shooting in the second half. Chris Falcon, Brett Berriman. Shoots the three. No good. They hit 12 of them in their first contest against the Knights earlier this season. An 11-point win. Eight of those for Dean Barch. So far in this basketball game, Minot has not hit a single three. Same way we started the basketball game. The Knights have not wavered in their philosophy. They've got it where they want it. It's close. They can keep it that way going into the fourth quarter. They've got a chance to come out of here with a win. And you heard Gene Manson. He doesn't want any part of this. He doesn't want this slowed down tempo. He wants to get up and run with the stallions he's got on his team. Minot ranked number one all season long. Grand Forks Central ranked number two for most of the season. And in the final poll, Greg Mass can't buy that one. Rattles out. Quickly, Chris Falcon of Arkinaber rattles in the three. You can see Chris Falcon really trying to push the ball up that time. So suddenly it is a nine-point lead for Mina. Not what Todd Olson wanted. Kenny Younger sat out that third quarter against Wapit and he came back so strong. And he's starting this third quarter strong after sitting out for a while in the second quarter. Joe Ford, good. Ford has six points in the game on two threes. And the steal from Ford, but he can't control it. Ford went down hard. He's going to be okay, though. Looks like he hurt his right shoulder. Well, that is his biggest weapon, that right arm. And we'll see if this bothers him at all. Great effort, though. Ooh, jeez. This is a very hard floor, this tartan surface at the Minot State, though. We got a timeout. Minot has extended their lead. Right now it is six. You're watching the Class A State Basketball Championship Final on the North Dakota NBC Sports Network. Very good basketball game, but working overtime on the nook. Dreaming of the days. <laughs> and he'll be playing for the Grand Fork Central Knights. At the conclusion of this game, of course, Dan and I will be selecting the American Dairy Association player of the game, but also we'll be unveiling the all-tournament team and those kinds of awards. You'll want to stick around for that. Mark Kinnebrew, the basket will not count. Foul was before the shot. I think they're going to call Johnny Haggard on the foul. We saw his dad here tonight sacrificing the UND Bison women's game down in Fargo to be here with his son for this one. Was that, was that Sammy? Sammy Haker, his father. No, but I don't think he can drive 55 either. Why not leading by six? Parts down to Younger, knocked away from Joe Ford. Great job for uh, Joe Ford denying the ball to Kenny Younger, and I guess that's a great way to play it. If, if Younger doesn't get in his hands, there's not much to worry about. Ford gives away five inches, but he has really harassed Younger the last two quarters of this game. Hager. Makes his dad glad he came to the ball game tonight. Five points for John Hanger. Mark Kinnebrew took a shot on the head that time from Mark Hoverson. Overson is a tough character, rough, tough basketball player, really mixes it up, sending a message that they're not going to lay down. Two fouls now on Hoverson. Nobody has yet to pick up a third personal foul for either team in this one. 4.40 left to go now in the third quarter, and it's a four-point game again. That shot from Hager, he, is, he hit a big three in the second quarter, cut it to four. Now he's cut it to four again with the two. Younger, triple team. Tries to draw the foul, can't get it. Boy, he's working hard. Still, the ball comes up to the Knights, and they have a chance to knock this one down to two. Rush Michael says, incidental contact, no foul call. Central would love to cut this lead to two points. Joe Ford thinking one. Bollinger, in and out. Mark Kinnebrew out-jumped wow. everybody. He got up there. He's got some springs. 
was six feet tall. That time he was the tallest player on the court. Inside, four minutes left to go in the third quarter. Brett Behrman has been stifled thus far. Dean Barch covered in the corner. Behrman, the long three. No good. Good position underneath by John Hager. Knights have done a good job neutralizing Kenny Younger since his first quarter outburst. Wow. Mark Hoverson. Now, you remember the first quarter when Hoverson tried to do that and he got just rejected. Behrman the steal, but... No, the Knights come back with it. Can they tie it? They do. Can you believe it? John Hager has come up with the big baskets tonight for the Knights, and now he's got a chance to give them the lead. And not only is the Grand Fork Central contingency going nuts, but look across the way. The Shanley people are up cheering for Grand Fork Central. Here's the replay. Hager goes up, he gets hacked, it falls through, and it's a tie game at 25 with a chance to take the lead on the free throw. Minot calls the timeout. We have a tie game. Stick around. Seems to be catch Minot on a bad shooting night, which is not often, and control Kenny Younger. You got a chance to beat him. That's exactly what's happening. Hager Knights it. take the lead. You know, so often you, the psychology of the game comes into play. Minot pulls way out in front in the first quarter. They kind of relax, and look what happens. Grand Fork Central gets back into it. Nice job that time. Mark Kinnebrew finding the open man, Dean Barch. And you might think Minot needs to get back in control of this game by getting it back into Kenny Younger. They need to find somebody other than Kenny that's going to help out. A one-point game. Overson thinks about it, but there's Kenny oh, Younger. <laughs> got a big tree in front of it. Overson continues to turn around with the ball and have Kenny Younger in his face. That's on Mark Kinnebrew. Kenny Younger sagging in the middle, but when Hager jumps outside, Younger's the guy to go get him. So watch for now Hager's alone. Three! Central, their biggest lead of the ball game. And another steal. Todd Olson, you can see him on your screen there, telling his team, slow down now. Stay with the game plan. Let's be deliberate. <laughs> he said at halftime, we played terrible in the first half. We're happy to be in this game. Kenny Younger, the big block. Wow. And Hoverson's going to get it over the back on Kenny Younger. Mark Hoverson and Kenny Younger getting very well acquainted in this contest. Well, you know, I was just going to say, that's it's been a good matchup. These two going back and forth. Hoverson 6-1, guarding the 6-8 Younger. Watch the rebound attempt now. Over the back comes Hoverson. Hoverson is an awfully scrappy player. That's three fouls on Mark Hoverson. Tremaine Davis ready to check back into the basketball game. Dean Barch inside. That's not his area of expertise. Tries to go baseline. He's cut off by Poole. Brett Behrman. Just two points in the game. Gene Manson would like to see him get more involved. Another steal for the Knights. Here they come. Leading by two. John Hager can't get it. Behrman the rebound. One minute left to go in the third quarter of this state championship game. Minot on the ropes. Blocking foul called on Chris Falcon. You know, in every kind of great contest, there's always somebody that steps up. And tonight it looks like it's going to be John Hager, number 22 of the Grand Four Central Knights, at least this quarter. foul. Greg Mask has played a very good game as well. Overson's going to sit down with those three fouls. Tremaine Davis back into the contest. Well, the way Hager's playing, they don't lose anything by making that switch. Exactly. Overson is doing a pretty good job to harass Kenny Younger. Inside a minute to play. The Minot was tied with Wapenden at the end of the third quarter in the first game, and people were shocked in this building. Chances are they'll trail after three here. Grand Fork Central being slow and deliberate. Playing a little bit of a weave here, letting the clock go down. Minot will not let them get an easy shot off, though, I can assure you. 15 seconds now. 
Getting down to 10, now they're going to have to run something. Taking a little too much time. Blocking foul called on Chris Falcon. Again. Falcon arguing, saying he had position, saying that Greg Mass pushed him off, but he's not going to change Russ Michaels' mind. Two fouls now on Chris Falcon, just like that, actually making three. His third personal. So Chris Falcon now has three. Just five seconds left. Not a lot of time for the Knights to get off a shot. Mask will have to take it. Uh, what a move! What a great move by Greg Mask! He surprised Kenny Younger by dipping to his left. Younger didn't even have a chance to harass the shot. Grand Fork Central looking for the huge upset we and better, a state title. We better strap it on, Dan. Why not? In a rare position to have it come back in the fourth quarter. That's what they're going to have to do if they want their second straight state title. Yeah, it is. It's really nice. Uh, we can see four or five thousand on the floor and then expand up in the upper deck. So it's a, it's been a good tournament. It's going to be a little nervous down the stretch here? I hope not, but it looks like it will be. Thanks a lot, Terry, for all your help. Thank you. Back to you guys. At the end of three quarters, the Knights lead by four, and the reason comes down to poor shooting. Actually, both teams under 35%. Why not? 13 turnovers. They had 20 in their first round game against Wapiton, and that has been the story. And they've never, they haven't, they haven't played like that all year. Boy, Brooks Bollinger had an open look at a three. That would have given them a seven-point lead. The Minot Magicians not used to playing from behind. This is a test for them. When it looked like in the first half, they were just going to blow the Knights out of the gym. Trying to become only the third team in state Class A history ever to finish a season unbeaten. Kenny Younger. Boy, I'd like to see him just turn and shoot that. Put it on the floor, you just give the defense a chance to react to it. Smart foul by Brooks Bollinger underneath there, though. Well, that's three on Bollinger, though. Holverson and Bollinger now with three each. It's about the only way the Knights are going to do this is to out-physical them. Brett Behrman. And only his second field goal of the game, only the second three for the Magi. And it's a one-point game again, and you know Brett Berryman is the guy to watch out for. If he gets hot, it's over. John Hager has been the man for the Knights to take the big shots and make the big shots. Real aggressive defense now for Minot as they're trying to get out and check those perimeter shooters of the Knights. Overson tries to go around. Younger tries to shoot over him. They call an offensive foul on Mark Overson. They do. And that is four fouls on Mark Overson. You see it here. This is a guy looking for some serious trouble the way he's been trying to match up with Kenny Younger, and he got burned that time. I don't know that Holverson thought he could score over the top of Younger. I think he was looking to draw the foul. Instead, they call it on him. Why not with a quick timeout call underneath it when they got stuck? Okay, we will come back. Minot has cut it to one. It's the state title game. Stay tuned. A very calm Todd Olson talking to his Knights in the timeout. Boy, they love the position they're in right now. He told his team to stay aggressive, stay on them, stay at it. The only thing is, his most aggressive player, Mark Overson, is on the bench with four personal fouls. That being, brings that man, Tremaine Davis, back into the game. And if uh, we were talking during the break, if you would have told me that he was going to be a non-factor and the Knights would be in this game, I don't think I would have believed you, but that's been the case so far. Tremaine's really got to step up his uh, game now that Overson's on the bench. And there's a silly foul, one they didn't need. Still neither team in the bonus. Two fouls now on John Hager. Four, six personal fouls on Central, so the next foul by the Knights will put them in the bonus. And Minot, a very good free throw shooting team. Looking to take the lead. 6.25, left to go in the game. March for three, no good. He hit eight against the Knights during the regular season in a matchup of the two. That's a school record. Has not hit one here. Kinnebrew and Barriman, the only threes for Minot. Younger way out on Davis. Boy, if he could find a cutter. But Younger ties it up, and it goes back to Minot. Big play from Kenny Younger. 
Tremaine got caught in that corner. Kenny got a hand on the ball, and that was it. Central with the press now. The Knights staying in that press, yeah, and why not? It, they have forced 13 turnovers so far. Minot needs to take care of the ball here in the final six minutes. First Falcon penetration, Behrman open for three. Good. That's going to be trouble. Brett Berriman, who has played so well in this tournament, I'm sure he's just about on everybody's all-tournament team as we had to fill those out tonight. Oh, Greg Matt. Oh, my. You know, we have talked about what great athletes these Grand Forks Central Knights are. Greg Mass shows it here. Watch this dipsy do. How do you do? What a nice move by Grand Forks Central's Greg Mass. You got everybody on my side of the court laughing over here with that great move, and he'll go to the free throw line. That's twice that he's been able to get fouls out of Younger with nice moves to the basket. Younger now with three personals. Mass can't complete the three-point play. Minot almost lost the ball out of bounds. Josh Blickery back into the game now for the Magi. Let's go, let's go. Brett Berriman has come alive with two three-pointers in the second half. They, they describe him as a quiet young man, but boy, it seems like he is the guy that loves to hit the shots at the most opportune moments, the biggest moments of the game. Lickery goes baseline. Tough miss. Kenny Younger, the pass down low. Nice pass by Kenny Younger, giving it up to Dean Barsh, who puts it in, and Central is down by two. Passed up an open eight-footer. He had nobody challenging him to get it to the open man. Joe Ford for three. Oh, ho, ho. Joe Ford has three field goals in this game. They are all from behind the line. Great Whoa. play by Barsh to keep that ball alive. Barsh wants a three. Needs a three. Air ball. They're going to call an over the back on Johnny Hager. That's three on him. The Knights have done a tremendous job of getting a hand up and harassing Dean Barch when he has tried from behind the three-point stripe. And now Josh Flickery will go to the free throw line with a chance to tie it up, maybe give mine out the lead. Overson with four fouls, Bollinger with three, Tremaine Davis with three. Josh Flickery ties it up at 36. And now he gives them the lead. What a ball game we have. 4.15 left to go. Minot a one point lead. job of Lickery getting out on Hager. Hager's had the hot hand for the Knights. Under four minutes to go in the game. About another minute off the clock. Well, I was going to say you see Horberson come in after another minute, but he's coming in right now. Big Joe shot Ford. by Greg Mass. Greg Mass with 15 points now for Grand Fork Central. And almost comes up with the steal. Younger goes baseline. Contact. No call. Barts. Ball tied up, it's a jump ball, central basketball. Greg Mask is playing a great ball game tonight. He's really mixing it up. Hoverson's gonna go back into the contest. There it is. Joe Ford, I thought he was gonna get called for a hack. Now they're calling a jump ball. They called a jump ball there and it looked like it was actually two Minot players that were actually struggling for that ball. Well, Joe Ford's the one that made that happen. Younger had an open shot. Ford made him change it. Central with the one-point lead in the basketball. Hager has hit some big shots. Can't get that one. Younger just out fights everybody for the ball. This is a great battle of wills. Coming up on three minutes left in the game. Behrman, the long three. Mass the rebound. He has done it all. And can you believe it? 5'10", Greg Mass getting the rebound underneath there.
That's the call. Timeout. Smart nice. play. Central leads it by one. During the regular season, Dusty Bergerud, 37, but he has been an odd factor tonight. Brett Perriman, 38 three-pointer. And then you got to go back to Todd Olson. Mr. Basketball in 1986. All District 12 twice for Mayville State. He's turned into a great coach. You really got to believe Todd Olson has come in here with the perfect game plan against the Magic City Magicians. First half, it just it, it honestly did not look like Grand Forks matched up well with Milan at all. No. Mark Kinnebrew will probably check back into the game. Yes, he does for Minot. John Hegry, what did you hear in the Minot huddle? Well, Dan, Gene Manson said nothing but, he had nothing but confidence to say in every one of his players. He said, it does not matter who takes the shot. Ten seconds is a lot of time. Get it down. Take a good shot. That's the key. Does not matter. They don't have any one place set up. He's instilled confidence into his whole team, and that's what he's going with. Mark Kinnebrew back into the game, a three-point threat. That was a move we expected. Dusty Bergerud, another good three-point shooter, but Chris Falcon stays in probably for his ability to handle the basketball. I think this game deserves another four minutes. They got to get a three. Behrman is a guy that can do it. Shoots it. Off, no good. Younger, one last chance. Oh! Grand Fork Central has won the state title. They have stunned the home team. Are you out there? I am right here. Fellas, I'm here with Todd Olson. Todd, incredible win. How's it feel? Our yeah, kids played great. We did the things we needed to do. We kept the score down. It feels awful good. The last 10 seconds, I got the two three-point opportunities. I mean, your heart had to be going. Yeah, it was. You watch those close. It's nice to be up by three in that situation, so you know you got overtime if it's a score. Talk to me about the hearts in your kids tonight. As they, they got behind by 10 in that first half, never gave up, and came back to get the win. Yeah, we came on. And we're real tentative. We were fortunate. Minot was missing some shots. We knew that's what had to happen if we were going to win the game, and that's what happened. And some guys really stood out for you. Mask and... Uh, uh, Hager hitting those free throws and some big threes. John Hager had a great ball game. Greg Mask really took over the game late in the game and took the ball to the basket. Just a super effort. Bottom line, you guys believed from the start you could win this, didn't you? Yeah, we really did. You know, we set that as a goal and we went to work on it and worked for five months and did a nice job. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. We'll go back to Dan and Dan now. Thanks a lot, Dennis Wyman. And I tell you what, Dan, tomorrow morning when you read about this in the paper, they're going to talk about the brilliant game plan going in by Toddles. Dennis Wyman has got somebody else on that side. All right, I've got Greg Mask, who came up huge in this game. Greg, how's it feel right now? It feels good, you know. I'm glad we got it this year, because next year is not looking so good. We went out, worked as hard as we could, and we got him. It was the goal from the beginning of the year. We got him. You guys were never intimidated by them, were you? No, we had to come out. You know, everyone came out shaky against them. You know, we just had to run, run, and run on. That's all. It had been easy to fold the tents when you were down by 10 in the first half. Is that a sign of the, the heart this team has, the way you fought back? This team has a lot of pride. I give a lot of credit to my teammates. You know, they helped out and everything, and we did it. So all right. Good. Congratulations on the great win. We'll go down to John Hagrey on the Minot side. Okay, thanks a lot, Dennis. Obviously, uh, a great season coming undefeated into the state title game. Not the way you wanted to finish it, Kenny, but uh, talk a little bit about this game. It was, a, it was a real close second half. Yeah, you know, they came out and they played really hard the second half, and we didn't come out. We didn't knock down many shots, and as you can see, it's a low-scoring game, and we used it in high-scoring games, and we weren't hitting too many shots. Talk about uh, the last play. Uh, I was in the huddle. Gene said he wanted anybody to take that shot. He said anybody can take it. He had confidence in the whole team, didn't he? Yeah, he had confidence in all of us. He said anybody take the three in. I got the rebound. I ran out and I took it and I missed. Talk about the team all year long. Uh, you guys just accomplished a lot of things. Yeah, you know, all year long we were number one and we just kept on winning and kept on winning. Thanks, Kenny. Uh -huh. Let's go over to Dennis Wyman. All right, I'm here with John Hager. John, he came up big in this one. You guys truly believe from the start, didn't you? Oh, this has been the dream since uh, last June when we knew we were number 
too. Man embarrassed us twice last year, and all we wanted was March 9th, 8:15. We've been talking about all year, and we wanted mine at nobody else. They embarrassed us twice, and we just wanted them so bad, and we got them. This is the win. You guys weren't intimidated by their record, the defending state champs, any of that, were you? Not at all. We, this, we've been talking about this for a long time. All we wanted to do is win. We knew we could beat them. We just wanted the chance. We got it. We got them. We wanted this one for a long time. Feels so good. And you got it. Yeah. Congratulations on the huge win. Thanks a lot. Go back to Dan and Dan now at the desk. Okay, and we're going to graciously turn it over to the public address announcer here, announcer here at the Minot State Dome for the post-game celebration and the awarding of the certificates and the trophies. Kara Berlin. Veronica Melachowski. And the bunny, Tanya Kraft. <laughs> Players, Kelly Bachmeyer. Number three, Brett Berryman. Number four, Mark McGowan. Number five, J.J. Gentilly. Number 12, Nathan Anderson. Number 14, Mark Kennebrew. Number 20, Chris Falcon. Number 22, Dusty Wald. Number 24, Dean Bartsch. Number 30, Dusty Bergrud. Number 34, Josh Blickry. Number 50, Kenny Younger. Number 54, Matt Knutson. Assistant coaches, Dale Olson, Bill Yusinski and Brian Horniker. And the head coach of the Magicians, Gene Manson. <laughs> For the 1996 state champion, Grand Fork Central Knights. <laughs> Participation awards for the cheerleaders. Sadie Callahan, Heather Wierma, Kelly Graduleski, Erica Jutnan, Megan Atkinson, and the mascot Cindy Walker. Players number 10, Mickey Ely. Number 12, Greg Mask. Number 13, Chris Gowan. Number 20, Brooks Bullinger. Number 22, John Hager. Number 24, David Dubuque. Number 32, Joe Ford. Number 34, Mark Hoverson. Number 40, Casey Blue. Number 42, Mark Fetch. Number 44, Tremaine Davis. Number 52, Kelly Nelson. Assistant coaches, Dan Carlson and Kevin Onstead. And the head coach of the Knights, Todd Olson. <laughs> and now to make the team presentations and some special awards, the Executive Secretary of the North Dakota High School Activities, Mr. Bob King.
Thank you, Terry. Before presenting the special awards that the association presents each year, on behalf of the association and all of our member schools, I think it's appropriate that we thank the people that put this tournament on for us each year, and that is the city of Minot that's always such a gracious host. Minot State University, Fran Hummel and his staff that always cordially invite us to come to their fine facility. The Minot Public Schools who give so much time and effort to sponsoring any tournament that we have in, in Minot. The Minot Tournament Committee and the man that puts it all together and makes everything work so smoothly and I think he deserves a great round of applause, Terry Jelmstead. Thanks, Terry. The association each year has two special awards that they have presented each one of their tournaments. The first is a sportsmanship award that is presented to each tournament team that demonstrates sportsmanship in these categories. Coaches to fellow coaches, to opposing players, coaches to officials, and coaches to their own team and fellow coaches. Players to their opposing players and coaches, obviously to officials and their own coaching staff. This year, sportsmanship awards will be presented to the following teams. Shanley High School. Shanley, Shanley has received a banner earlier, so this year they just get the year to go on to that banner. Would a representative from Wapiton High School please come forward? They need to while a representative from Wapiton is coming down to receive their banner, the other teams that received the award, Williston High School. They also had received a banner earlier. Grand Fork Central, who also had received a sportsmanship banner earlier. And Devils Lake High School, would you please come forward and receive a sportsmanship award? and Minot High School, who also had received a banner earlier. So congratulations to all of those teams for receiving a sportsmanship banner. Find my notes here. The Spirit Award, which is an award that is presented to the cheer squads, the communities who represent each of those schools in the competition is judged by a committee of judges. This year we had a very difficult time. In fact, it's so close that we have decided to give two Spirit Awards. Spirit Awards this year, one goes to Shanley High School. So if their, if their cheerleaders are here, we'd like them to come forward. No, we'll just give one of the attendees. And the second award goes to Minot High School. Then the team awards would representatives from a very fine Minot High School basketball team please come forward and receive the runner-up award. And the 1996 state Class A basketball champion Grand Fork Central. At this time, we have some special awards. To make the first presentation is a member of the North Dakota High School Activities Coaches Association, past president from Northwood, John Hutchison.
Oh, Randy Coleman from Devil's Lake, excuse me. It's my pleasure to represent the High School Coaches Association. This year's award winner of the Class A Boys Basketball Coach of the Year is Gene Manson from Minot High School. And now to recognize some outstanding individuals, the sports director from KMOT TV, John Hegre. Thanks, Terry. It is my pleasure to represent the working press here at the 96 State Class A tournament. That is radio, television, and sports writers. I will announce the all-tournament team and the most valuable player. First player selected, Greg Mask, Grand Forks Central. Mark Holverson, Grand Forks Central. Hunter Reinke, Wapaton. The fourth selection on the all-tournament team, Mike Johnson, Fargo Shanley. The following six players were awarded unanimous choices on the all-tournament team. Kermit Cooper, Devil's Leg. Justin Johnson, Devil's Leg. Another unanimous choice. Sam Pullis, Mandan. <laughs> Brett Berryman, Minot High. Kenny Younger, Minot High. And Joe Ford, Grand Forks Central. And now the most valuable player of the 1996 Class A basketball tournament, Greg Mask, Grand Forks Central. Thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to Terry Jomstead. That concludes our awards. If the teams would pick up their game balls, congratulations to the Knights on their 1966 and their state champions. Thank you for coming. Okay, well, we are all still a bit stunned here, but we're going to try to make some sense out of it. One last time out, we'll come back with some final thoughts when we come back. Grand Fork Central, your state Class A champions.
Bulletin paper is still flying around the Minot State Dome. Most of it coming from the Grand Forks Central side. They have stunned the number one ranked Minot Magicians. Ended their uh, claim or, or their attempt to become the third undefeated Class A state champion in uh, state history. And it'll remain at two. And just a... Boy, every state tournament we've done this year has gone down to the wire, some great championship games. You bet. You know, you can measure stats, you can measure height, you can measure weight, but you really can measure heart and desire, and that's what Grand Fork Central brought to the table tonight, and they are true champions, the 1996 Class A champions with a 42-39 win over the heavily favored Minot Magicians. Everything had to be working. The consensus was you try to keep the score down and slow it down against Minot. They did that. But uh, the, the factor in there also that coaches have agreed upon is you got to also be a little lucky. Minot's got to be off their game, and they just couldn't hit the outside shots. Only three point, three three-pointers in this game after hitting 12 of them against the Knights earlier in the season, and that was really the difference, and they couldn't hit the three when they needed to at the end, too. But just a tremendous game, tremendous season from both teams. Worth mentioning, it's a clean sweep for the East. Central wins the state title. Third place goes to Shanley. Devils Lake wins the Constellation Championship. So a tremendous season of Class A basketball for the East. We're not done with basketball in the state. We'll be in Bismarck next week for the state Class B tournament. But right now, well, little drama in this one, but the ADA player of the game is coming up next. We will uh, let you know who it is right after this. Sand led every Brett Berryman trying to tie up the game. Central had a three-point lead. Kenny Younger can't do it. Congratulations, Grand Fork Central, as they win the state championship tonight, beating Goliath Minot by the final of 42-39. The Knights, a great season, 21-4. Third place went to the Deacons from Fargo Shanley, eight points better than Mandan tonight. Well, the east side of the state kind of pulled it out. Yeah, they did a real nice job yeah. out there. One Fargo team, and yeah. they, they managed to place. Yes, congratulations to the Knights. That's a that's a huge win. Nobody thought anybody could touch mine up, mm -hmm. but they did. Yep. Fun stuff. Yep. Okay, we'll be back after this.